Okay, so that covers most usage scenarios, but just for fun, let's check out the actual creating arbitrary speed ramps with Kralos. Now, by speed ramp, I mean taking a clip and altering its speed as it goes, so that the final clip slows down and speeds up as it plays, as in this example. Now, we're going to be using this cause sequence for our speed ramp, so go ahead and get yourself another sequence and load the clip in. Just going to press play on this and see exactly what we need to do. Now, the secret to a good speed ramp is a little bit of planning. Now, there's not much of it, so don't get in a huff. What we need to do, first of all, is make sure that we have the actual source frames to frames. So we know exactly which frame we're going to be using and where they occur in the timeline. So make sure you have this set up for both sequences. So what we need here is a bit of planning. So grab yourself a piece of paper and a pen and we can see exactly which of these frames we need to use to perform a speed ramp. In this case, what we need to do is to get a close-up of the actual insignia of the car. So we get a look at the actual logo and then before it pans off again to the correct speed. So if we go back here, we know we need to actually start our speed ramp at around frame 27 or 28 and continue it to frame 40 and 46, 47, 48 before we release the speed ramp at frame 50 and continue to normal speed again. So we slow down in the middle of the clip so now we've got these numbers, what we need to do is bring up the actual Kronos node again, bring this on, and just drop it onto our footage. And go to the filter tab to see exactly what's happened. Now, I've already got a Kronos node prepared over here, which works for us. It's best to avoid pyramiding with furnace core nodes. What I mean by this is applying multiple effects requiring multiple input frames to a clip. Essentially, if an effect requires five frames from its input to create an output frame and you have two passes of it applied, then the combination of the two will check out 25 frames from the input clip. Think of like a pyramid of requests, where the base, i.e. the number of checkouts, has to get bigger the higher, i.e. the more effects the pyramid goes. Some systems are able to cache these requests and make getting already checked out frames quicker. However, Final Cut Pro does not, and so it gets significantly slower than what you apply. If you absolutely need to stack them, then you have two courses of action open to you. You can temporarily switch other effects in the stack on and off, whilst you work on the parameter settings, or you can pre-render out the sequence and bring them back in. In this case, I have a Kronos prepared earlier, which I have actually disabled so as not to adversely impact the performance. So, firstly, what we need to do is change the method option to blend. So we just get an idea of how the calculations occur, and it's not performing the full actual method calculation. What we also need to do is change this to source frame, so we gain access to the actual source frame parameters. So firstly, what we need to do is mark out exactly the length of our clip. I'm just going to expand the frame section down so we get a little bit more access to the graph. So we need to drop a keyframe on the first frame and then what we need to do is go back to frame 78 and drop a keyframe on there and tell the source frame that this particular keyframe is for frame 78. So what we've done is we set the beginning and the end of our clip as you can see the progressive graph. What we need to do now is actually go back into the middle of the clip and before we started this, we wrote down the numbers which we wish to actually perform a speed wrap on. Those were the frames starting at frame 27, which is around here. I wanted it to go forward and continue and do a full slowdown between the frames of 46 and 48, and then go back up to full speed at around frame 50. So what we need to do now is mark those frames out. I'm just going to go in here and mark this out as frame 27, as close as possible. Frame 28 there, but we can get the best idea. I'm just going to mark this down now, put a keyframe on. At this point, the slow motion will kick in, and our clip should be running at half speed. This keyframe essentially says, full slow down here. And what we also need to do is go to the end of our clip, so it's frame 50, where we need to end or slow down, and drop a keyframe. 
I pop in this keyframe here. I essentially put a bracket in to prevent the speed remap impacting on any frames outside of the desired frame range. This is where we want our clip to be back up to running at normal speed again. So now we've actually set exactly where the speed ramp starts and exactly where the speed ramp should end. What we need to do now is adjust the middle half of the section. Now, when we're looking at actual image sequence, we realize we wanted to slow down to occur on frame 46. And just to give it a little bit more control over this, I want it to drop another keyframe on frame 38. If we go to frame 46, what we need to do is change this so it becomes frame 40. So we're just slowing the clip down just a little bit. And if we just play through this using the arrows on the numeric keypad, we can see exactly how the slowdown occurs on displays in the visual screen. So you see it's quite good. We're just learning exactly what we need to. So what we need to do is go back to this keyframe here, which is on frame 38. I just want to slow it down a little bit more so it becomes frame 33. Again, we've just got a nice little slope on our graph before the keyframe releases and goes back to normal speed again. So we're getting a nice little slowdown here. Now what you need to do with this is actually apply a couple more keyframes and play around with the actual settings of this, exactly where the keyframes occur and where they drop off again to see exactly how it affects the actual car on screen. And once you've got yourself a nice retime on this, what you need to do is change the calculations back to motion for the full effect of the Cronus node and render the sequence out. And once you've done this, and you're happy with the actual curve that you have, here's one I prepared earlier, you can actually get a full render of this and view the results. We also have the retime fields option. Now we choose this to set whether retime operation is performed between frames or fields. Now we have the frame to frame option. Now this retimes between complete frames, but the results will be on the correct scan line. We also have the option to do a field to field retime. Now this retimes between the fields that are used to make up the frames, but the results are shifted vertically by one pixel, which may introduce a vertical jitter on the retime clip. For this actual shot, we're going to be using the frame to frame. Also, we have the deinterlacing method. Now, this parameter is mostly needed when applying Kronos to interlaced or fielded footage in order to produce progressive footage. Now, it allows you to choose the algorithm that is best used to generate the missing field. We have none which does not deinterlace the image. Now this option retains both the fields as they are and places them in the progressive image. But for this particular piece of footage, it is not interlaced, so we need to click on the non option. If you press play now, we can see we've performed quite a good speed ramp and we've actually slowed down the actual insignia of the car so we're getting a full effect of the actual Kronos node. Now, as always, this is only the skimming the surface, the full power of these plugins. If you need further information about how to use them and the parameters included, which aren't covered in this tutorial, please refer back to the Furnace Core Manual.